Hey guys, Tasha here from Stardust Gold Crochet. This week's stitch is actually a flower motif, so I thought it'd be fun to do something different this week since it's summertime. So this flower motif is really easy. It looks like it might be a little difficult, but it's actually pretty simple. So I'm using a four millimeter hook and I'm using a three weight yarn, which is a DK. It's called Shippus, and I never pronounced that properly, but I'll put those links down below for you. And I'll also put it in the blog post, so the full written pattern is up on the blog. So to start, we're going to create a magic circle. Yes, and I'm still wearing my Band-Aid because my hand is still healing. So the magic circle um, creates a nice little center where it's able to make it real tight in the center so it's like to start off you're gonna wrap your yarn around your index and middle finger insert your hook grab your yarn and twist it and then grab your loose piece and pull it through for a slip stitch and there's your tail so let's undo this and then I'll show you again so use your middle and index finger use your thumb position it between your middle finger then kind of cross it around hold it with your ring finger grab the yarn twist it around and then grab the loose piece and pull it through it's an easy way to make a magic circle then untwist your tail and kind of get it like that so we're going to work a standing or a starting double crochet I'm new to this I've never really done it before so pull up a loop then you're gonna hold the loop and then twist it around grab your free yarn yarn over and pull through one loop and it's a little tricky I used Moogly's blog <laughs> to learn how to do this then you yarn over and pull through two. So I'll put that link in the blog post as well so you can see how Moogly does it, which is a lot classier than what I just did. So situate your tail and your um, magic circle and then we're gonna work 15 double crochets into the magic circle. Actually, a 15 total, including the standing double crochet that you just did. And I really like using magic circles. You don't have to use a magic circle. You can chain and work into the chain after joining them. So go ahead and create those 15. Pause the video. And we're back already. See, my little chain didn't, my little um, thing didn't work so well right there. So we're going to do a slip stitch, but we're going to join with our new color. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with new color changes but you just lay your new color over your hook and then slip stitch it through and I found a knot in my yarn you can go ahead and cut your main color so here again how you change colors insert your hook into the first stitch lay your new color over and then slip stitch it back through and then pull everything tight so here we're going to work a series of single crochets and we need to get 32 the written pattern on the blog is slightly different than what I'm doing here um, so I would follow the written pattern on the blog we're going to work in between the double crochets and you can see not through the top two loops but in between them there's a little hole right there in between them so we're gonna do two single three three single crochets into the first space between the two double crochets and then you're gonna work two double crochets I'm sorry two single crochets through the center of those two double crochets and you're gonna work that around with working another set of three single crochets between the two we want to get up to 32 stitches so we had 15 double crochets to start 
we would normally increase two and get up to 30, but we wanna to get to 32. So however you get there is up to you, or you can follow the written pattern on the blog because I made it um, a little more detailed than what I'm doing here. So once you get around, make sure you have 32 stitches. So go ahead and count them, make sure. And we're going to join the new color using a petal color. So I used pink. You can use whatever color you'd like. Go ahead and snip that color number two. And I used Shape A's. <laughs> I'll never pronounce that right. Maybe I will. Um, stone washed, and I think the color was 820. And I'll put all those colors in the blog, like I said before. So join the new color the same way we did it before. You insert your hook into the first top two loops of the stitch, put your new color over your hook, and then slip stitch it through. And so here we're going to create a chain, a chain five. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five. And then we're going to work a double crochet four together. That's wrap your yarn around three times. We're going to work into the back loop of the starting chain, the base of the starting chain. So find that little back loop back there. It's kind of hide, kind of hiding a little bit. Insert your hook into the back loop, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then you should have five loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. And then don't complete it all the way, yarn over and pull through two. So you'll have two loops on your hook. And we're gonna repeat that into the next back loop. So you're doing a double treble crochet, but we're working them together. So we're gonna work a total of four. Our starting chain counts as a stitch in there, so we just kinda of leave that as is. We're going to work one more into the next two. So you have quite a few loops on your hook. Just remember, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So you do that three times. So now we have four. We need one more so we can make five posts. And there you'll have your five posts. And we're going to yarn over and pull through all of those. And there's your first petal. After that, we chain nine. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And we're going to work our first half of the double cro or double treble five together into the same space of the last stitch we just worked. So you're going to work at the base and go through the back, yarn over and pull up, and then yarn over, pull through two, three times. One, two, and three. And then we work five of those, working into the next stitch, the back loop of the next stitch. So there we have two, And this is creating a double treble five together. Sounds like double treble. I was going a little bit slow here in case this is something that's new to you. So there we have four. We need one more into the back loop. And there we have our five. So we're gonna yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook. And then again, we chain nine and do a double treble five together. So you work your chain nine and you work that the same as you did the previous petal. And we do that eight times total, six, seven, and eight. So when you get those complete, come back 
So here I have my seven and I'm gonna work the eighth one again. These go pretty fast too, once you get the hang of doing the double treble five together. So we've got one more working into that last stitch, then yarn over, pull through all, and we're going to chain nine one more time. And then we're going to join into the top of the double treble four together from the beginning of the round. And it's kind of, my stitch is a little loose there, but that's good because you can actually see it. So we're going to join our new color, which is the green I used to kind of create where it looks like a leaf. Go ahead and cut your color three. And of course you don't have to change colors. You can do it in solid. And slip stitch through, and then we're going to work on our last round. Pull all the little loose ends tight. So our last round is basically single crochets. So we're gonna chain one, and then we're gonna work single crochet, nine single crochets around and into the chain space, the chain nine space. And it's good to get good tension on these. They can create little gaps. So if you wanna make 10 of them, so they're a little more solid. This pattern is pretty forgiving and since it's the last round, you can pretty much do what you want. So there we have it, but you see there's a little space there. You can just kind of slide those around until you get rid of the little holes. Or again, like I said, you can always do another single crochet. And where we continue is we're gonna skip the petal and we're going to do nine single crochets into the chain nine space. And that's it. So after this you continue around, you skip the petal and you work nine single crochets around each of the chain nine space. Pretty simple, huh? I really love it. And when you get finished, come back, you can see the difference between what it looks like when you block it and when it's not blocked. So here, I, uh, mine looks a little messy. Just go ahead and pull all those little tails and then you get to weave them in. Um, so here, you can do a regular sti slip stitch join into the first single crochet that we did, or you can use a different method and it's an invisible join. So go ahead and snip your yarn and then I'll show you how to do an invisible join. So the way I learned how to do this, and I don't really know if I'm right, but I'll show you. So you go ahead and you pull out your yarn, then you take your hook and you insert it into the front, from the front to the back, into the first single crochet of your round. Grab that, that yarn, hook it over, pull it through, and just slide it on out the front. Oops, I got snagged. So just grab it, pull it through, and then yank it on through the other side. Then go to the last single crochet you created, insert it from the back to the front through the back loop only, grab your yarn again and pull it through. And that creates less of a knot and adds a little bit more flow to it. And then if you have any loose little ones like that, just pull them tight. A lot of it helps when you block it.
oops, excuse me, to make it put a little bit more together. So the one on the left here is the one I blocked. The one on the right, obviously, is the one we just did. You can see the petals bunched up a little bit, but blocking it really helps. So highly recommend blocking it. And if you use this yarn, it dries super fast. All right, and see that little hole right there? Well, I had a little bit of trouble with the shape base because it's it can snag a bit. So when I tried to make it go tight and pull it real tight, it snapped. And that kind of, oops, that snapped. It bums me out, but it's okay. No big deal. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, leave them down below. Hit the like and subscribe button and head on over to the blog for the full written pattern. Hope you guys have a great afternoon, evening, weekend, and all that. Happy crocheting!